Now, A-level physics is a bit like a sandwich. You've basically got a load of stuff that you do in year 12 and a load of stuff that you do in year 13. And there's all sorts of interesting bits in the middle. But this isn't enough. What, this isn't really a full meal. What you need is something on the side. And here we have an accompaniment. Now, what I'd like you to do is imagine that this is a bit like the exams. These are things that you've got to do that you, know, you get assessed on. However, when you do the full A-level, you don't just get the exams, you also get something uh, which is basically called the practical endorsement. Now, the practical endorsement is something that kind of really sits nicely alongside the exams that you do. And I'd like you to imagine that it's a bit like a load of crisps. You know, it's the kind of thing which, you know, if you didn't have it, uh, you still do all right. You can't get like a nice lunch. But with this, it just makes everything that, that little bit better. So what on earth is this practical endorsement? Well, it comes from this fascinating document that you never, ever have to read. There's something called the Common Practical Assessment Criteria, which is a CPAC. And basically, this sets out uh, the things that you need to do as a student by the time it gets to the end of your A-levels. And basically, there are, um, you know, you've got to be able to show at some point, if you're doing a science, so if it's biology, chemistry or physics, that you can basically follow written procedures. You know, this is very much like a recipe. You've got to follow and do exactly what it says. You've also got to apply, um, you know, investigative approaches and methods when using uh, equipment and uh, instruments. So, you know, can you use a meter ruler? Can you use a stopwatch to time and so on? Also, uh, basically, if you start doing the practical, can you walk out of the classroom at the end? Can you do it safely? Or every time you do something, do you kind of burn yourself and kind of cut yourself? Now, this one here is kind of a lot of common sense and also self-preservation. But if you do all of this, what's the evidence? You know, can you make and record your observations? Uh, you know, can you draw resorts tables? Can you draw graphs? Can you actually do something with the, the data that you get? And finally, uh, can you research, reference and report? Now, this bit here basically means that you don't just type uh, you, you, whatever you want to find out into Google and take whatever it says on Wikipedia. Can you actually critically analyse stuff? Now, this document here is very, very dull but it informs the things that you're doing each week or each month in your science lessons. Now, the important thing about the CPAC is it's kind of like a high level document and every single exam body, so OCR, Edexcel, AQA, everybody has to do stuff which kind of fits this. And that's why you're doing the practical endorsement because in the exams itself, because it, you know, your, your mark at the end, if it's a, an E, a B or an A star, it's all based on what you write about in the exam. But this is basically designed to actually make sure that you don't just spend your whole time doing exam questions, which is pretty dull, but you actually get a taste of doing real science. Now, um, this real science, it comes in the form of your practical endorsement. Now, the practical endorsement is basically like a load of crisps. Basically, over the two years that you do an A-level, you've got to do a total of 12 practical tasks. So here we have the 12 tasks. Now basically you've got to do a minimum of 12 practicals over two years, which is pretty straightforward. That's about six a year, so one every month or one every two months. And the good thing is actually the practicals, they, they're the kind of things that your teachers are doing anyway. So if you're going to do uh, physics, you're going to be doing a practical on Young's modulus, uh, which we did last year, which we've done for many years beforehand. But this time it, it just means you need to write it up. And basically all the practicals that you're doing really fit into the course. But they're not just practicals that you have to complete. Uh, some of the ones maybe in year 13 include you planning your own investigation, as well as maybe doing a bit of research. Now, again, different exam bodies have different practicals, but you've got to do at least 12 over the two years, which is kind of what you do anyway. Now, the other thing is, uh, because everybody wants you to pass, you know, your teachers, you and the exam boards, they're not assessed. If you can't work out how to use a piece of equipment, it's not an assessment where the teacher is going to watch you fail. It's basically a chance for the teacher to kind of help you with something. So perhaps if you have a micrometer and you can't measure the distance, if you don't know, you can talk to the people around you, you can talk to your teacher. If they can show you how to use that equipment and by the end of the session you, you know how to use it, then effectively you've passed that part of the practical endorsement. Now, the other good thing about the practical endorsement is it's not completely separate to your main A-level. Basically, what can happen is all of these practical tasks can sort of be embedded within your normal teaching. So you may be learning about Young's modulus and then you do the experiment. You're learning about combinations of resistors and you do the experiment. And that means it's not like a separate thing that you have to do separate. Basically, all of this practical endorsement material you do is part of your normal A-level. And the better you do in the practical endorsement by you know, thinking about errors, thinking about uncertainty, thinking about the scientific method, the better you're going to do in your final exams. Because in your final exams, 
this is where you get asked questions, okay? This is where you have to be able to analyze um, information, maybe looking at percentage uncertainty, percentage difference. It's where you get asked about, you know, how you'd plan an investigation, how you'd actually do something to kind of minimize these errors. And therefore, although um, the experiments are quite fun, you've still got to know about some of the kind of basic practical stuff that, uh, that you need for your exam. So does that make it a bit clearer? Have I helped you or have I just confused you? Basically, think about your practical endorsement as a bit like the crisp, the things that accompany your main A-level. Now, the thing is, you've got to have them. Uh, you, you don't have a choice, really. Basically, when it comes to university and applying, if that's the way, the way you'd like to kind of see your future going, even if you've got an A-star in the physics, you've got to show that you've passed the practical endorsement. And the good thing is, as long as you turn up and do the minimum amount of work, you're going to pass it. And it's going to be that passing certificate. So good luck, uh, and I hope it all goes well. Thank you.